Hi, Facebook family. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited that you're here today because I want to talk to you about parent involvement in your classroom and how you can kind of um, do all that you can on your end to get parents involved in the classroom and keep them, you know, knowing what you're doing in the classroom, how their child is doing, and just kind of keep your end of the deal up. Um, I know we can't always control, you know, what a parent does. They're super busy too at home, but we can always do the best as their children's teacher to kind of make life easier for them in terms of knowing what we're doing, if we need anything, how their child's doing, um, in simple ways that are also really easy for us to kind of get a hold of. So um, if you are unable to listen to this video right now or you, the sound's not working or you don't have time to listen, um, there is a blog post link above this video that you can click on. It is a blog post that I wrote about three and a half years ago. So these tips are things that I've been doing for the last three and a half, four years um, while I was a self-contained teacher and also when I was a resource teacher um, before I moved to Texas. So I um, kind of wanted to share all of this with you and give you some tips that are from that blog post, but do it in video form. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is building rapport with your parents and that's really important not only do you have to build that rapport with um, your students but you also have to build that rapport with your parents so you can do that at the beginning of the year by giving them like a get to know me kind of sheet um, when i send home my parent flip books i put in a little section about me and kind of let them know who i am i say hi i'm stephanie um, i'm from pennsylvania but i live here in texas now i have two dogs and i'm married and i love reese's and dinosaurs like i kind of tell them a little bit about me so that they're a little bit more at ease to know that i'm a real person behind the teacher so that's one thing that you can do to build that rapport and then all of these other things that i'm going to share with you are also great ways to build rapport with the parents in your classroom so um, one thing that i do suggest if you are a special ed teacher which i'm hoping you are because you're here um, I have a parent IEP binder and I know sometimes when we go to IEP meetings parents come and they have these huge binders full of stuff and then sometimes there's parents who just kind of come and sign pretty much sign their life away right and they're really confused about what's going on and um, but they're very trusting that we're going to do what's right for their child. So this is something that I created for the parents of my students and it's a parent IEP binder, so you can certainly point them in the right direction of finding this, or you can create one for them. I think it's a great place to start. Um, you don't have to go as all out as I did to make this one, but it comes with all of these different tabs and things like that. Um, it goes through, um, let's see, it goes through um, information about my child. So these are things like if they switch schools in the middle of the year, or um, what was great one year was I had a parent make me a binder about her child's um, history. And it was really great because before I even met the child, I felt like I already knew her because she had shared all of that information with me. It was fantastic to kind of have a little blurb about the kid, um, things they like to do at home. So you're getting to know more about the child as well. There's also medical information. So if there's important medical information, they can certainly fill out the form or keep it all in here. Um, who their teacher is, who their teachers were, what schools they went to anything they need to know for that. Important acronyms um, is great, which they vary state to state, sometimes district to district. So these are really important because when we're in a special ed meeting, when we're in IEP meetings, we're talking really, really fast, right? And we're spitting out all of these acronyms that parents most of the time pretty much don't know what they mean. Um, they'll get like a couple of them like FAPE and they know what an IEP is and they maybe know what the LRE is, but um, for the most part, they're really confused when we start spitting out acronyms. So giving this to them is a great, great help and it's something that they can have. There are pre-meeting things in here, their IEP team, contact information. They can have a tab for the child's IEP. I mean, it literally goes through everything and even includes things for outside services. So um, this is great for everybody actually, for the school, for the parents, for everyone. So this is a great option. I'm picking up something else here underneath, it's stuck. Um, a great option to help keep parents organized as well as yourself for working with students with special needs. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do is build rapport with your parents. Again, the rest of these, tip, these tips are going to kind of help you with that as well. So the next thing you want to do is calendars. So at school, sometimes they send out, um, you get the monthly calendars and you send those home, right? And it kind of tells you, there might be like the lunch calendar, with what's for lunch every week um, or every day of the month or you can see it online, or there's like the activities calendar, things that are coming up in the activities calendar for the month. You might send them out monthly, or the parents might just need to see them on the computer. They can log into the district website and kind of see it that way. Um, but one thing that I do for my parents is I create these flip books, and they're really fun. 
Um, it kind of gives it to them in a different way. So it's not something that they're really used to seeing in there. Well, they are by the time they get them for me. But at the beginning of the year, they're not used to seeing it in this format. So they're going to look through it and be like, what is this? Parent calendar quarterly. And then they're going to open it and they're going to look and be like, this is really cool. Like, I really like that my teacher took the time to do this and let me know things that are really important. Ooh, we're backwards for me. Um, that are really important for my child in my child's classroom with my child's teacher that they are doing. Maybe there are things that you're doing with the inclusion teacher or the resource teacher that's not going to be on the activities calendar. Maybe you're going on, like, for self-contained classrooms, we go on CBIs um, or community-based instruction field trips. <laughs> we're not allowed to call them field trips. But maybe you're going on those so you can put those on the calendar because they're not going to be on the activities calendar for everybody else to find out. So this is a great way to kind of fill in what you're doing month to month. And it does come in the quarterly option. There's a biannual option for those of you who want to do six months at a time. And then there's also the triannual option, which you can send at home three at a time. So there is this option and I will provide links to all of this. Or if you go to the blog post, you can get all the links in there as well. So sending home calendars, letting parents know what's going on at school and specifically what's going on in your classroom because sometimes you might be doing like a stellar science experiment, right, in your classroom, but not as necessarily everyone's going to do it and won't be on the activity calendar. So that's a great thing to kind of keep in mind is sharing specific classroom things with your parents. So the third thing I'm going to say is phone calls. So phone calls are really, really important. I personally... I dislike talking to anybody on the phone and it's not even like parent thing. Like I am not a phone talker at all. I can email and text like mad all day, but I'm not a phone talker by any means. Um, so it's something that I kind of have to step outside of my comfort zone when I'm in my classroom to do to speak to parents on the phone, which is okay, right? There's nothing wrong with that. We all have our things. Um, but you're not alone if you don't like making phone calls. That's okay. Like I even hate calling Comcast. So um, <laughs> just a little tidbit about me. But so when you're calling parents, what you want to make sure you're doing is you want to do, it's kind of like a sandwich thing. And I think they, there's like a specific name for it is you want to call them and be like, Hey, this is Stephanie Delussi. You know, I'm your child's teacher. And you want to kind of give them a positive first. Be like, so Joey did really great in class today. Um, he really, really loved that fun food Friday activity we did. Um, but I did want to call and let you know, you know, about I'm at recess or maybe he didn't eat all of his lunch and they're kind of, you know, whatever you have to tell the parent, it doesn't even have to be like a negative thing, but if you have um, something that maybe the child got into trouble or um, they go to the nurse for something or anything that they needed, that's not necessarily like a, yeah, your child did amazing, which you should be making those phone calls more often than not. Um, you want to do kind of the sandwich thing. So like a positive than the negative, but it's not really a negative, like the bad thing. That's a really bad word bad thing and then the good thing or the positive thing so make your sandwiches and do it that way for me to keep track of when I'm calling parents and when I'm contacting parents I use this freebie that I've shared before it's in my store um, this is how I keep track of parent phone calls parent emails parent meetings um, again my classroom is color-coded so I kind of give each child a tab and then inside of it I just keep track of all of that information and the best thing about this are the next steps. And they're the next steps for me. So it gives me a reminder. I'm very visual. I need to have it written out to see, you know, what I need to do. So if the parent's concerned with something on the bus, then maybe I need to follow up with somebody that's on the bus and check in with the bus driver in the morning to see what's going on or see if something happened. Um, and it kind of gives me that, what do I need to do to help make the parent feel reassured that their child is safe and happy and having a good time and all that fun stuff. So this is a freebie in my TPT store. Again, I'll link to it afterwards. But that not only helps me keep track of phone calls, but I can always go back if a parent forgets that we had a conversation, I can be like, well, we talked about this on this date. Um, and these were the things that I kind of did, you know, based off of our conversation. Um, and it might help them remember it as well. <clears throat> excuse me so number one build rapport number two get calendars out that are going to help your parents remember things that are specific to your classroom and also to your school that your child is in number three you're going to want to make phone calls make more positive phone calls than anything else because then um, when you have to make that phone call that something bad happened at school today um, it makes it easier to have those conversations with parents um, number four, our communication notebook. So I have gone over this one kind of a little bit before, but every day I, um, I have students in my classroom, obviously, and they all have their own communication log. So this is one that I made with my name on it. And every day I kind of write on here, 
got to get used to this not being backwards for you guys. Um, I kind of mark in, like I put their schedule here, the main things they're going to be working on, and then I tell the parent how they did, and they can read up here. I can put notes, the parents can write back to me, and then this is something that I will change out every quarter. Um, so every marking period, we have four marking periods, so every marking period the child's going to get a new binder, and, well not a binder, but I bind it, it's easier to keep track of. And then I'm going to keep this, because there are important notes that are in here, um, from the parent, me to the parent, if I need to remember a date or I need to go back and see why maybe Joey had a bad day, I'm going to write notes on here and say Joey wasn't feeling well um, during this time and those things. So I can really keep track of it using this if a child was absent um, and maybe I forgot to mark it on like my written portion and I'm like, oh, well, let me check his binder because I'll write A, B on here with the date to say that they're absent. So these are really great and this is a way to communicate with parents daily without having to making like parent phone calls every single day or sending a parent an email every single day. So these are great to keep parents informed about what is going on um, behaviorally in the classroom. When it comes to student work, I shared these last week, I think. I have these stickers that I created and they're stickers on everything. So I'm just gonna kinda, and these are what I put on when a student is doing work. I call these communication stickers. So when a student is doing work, when you look at this, you don't know, well, you mean, you know that I did this, but you don't know if the child was nonverbal and did it hand over hand with the para or with the teacher or whoever they did it with, or they don't, the parent doesn't know, the parent might think that the child did this on their own. And they're gonna come to an IEP meeting and be like, well, my child can spell Monday like this. Like, why does he need this goal about identifying days of the week? Well, you put these stickers on the back and you choose the stickers that go with it so I pretended that this was a student who needed a full physical hand over hand prompt. So the parent knows that when they were doing this, the parent's gonna know to check for the sticker, whether you put it on the back or the front, and they're gonna know that, okay, so Miss D or whoever my pair is, helped hand over hand to cut these out, to help glue this and get this in order. So that's great. And then I can also put little notes here. I can sign the back or my pair can sign the back. So they know exactly who is working with the child. They have this. I keep these work samples. I don't keep all of them, but I keep them in their color coded notebook and um, I keep those all in there. So these communication stickers are a lifesaver. They save you from having to sit down and write everything. You can just pull a sticker and put them on there. Um, so I love, love, love these. These are one of my favorite things ever. Number five is sending home a parent newsletter. Now, I know that um, at school, some of you have like a peak of the week or a peak of the month, and you kind of have to change it. Like if you have to have a website through the school district with like your information and your schedule and all that fun stuff, sometimes you have to have a peak of the week. Um, that's what we call it anyway. So the parents kind of know what you're teaching that week and what goes on. But there's also the parent newsletter. I know some of you do send home like your own individual newsletter. Um, so you can do that and I'm pretty sure there's a freebie newsletter either on my TPT or on my blog and I will share the link after this but I do have a free editable newsletter that you can use to send home to parents to kind of let them know what's coming up if you need supplies or anything like that it's all there so I will share that but sending home a newsletter is a great thing um, again you don't have to send home a newsletter but it does help it could be email format um, if you are really good with Google Drive and you can send it through Google um, there are apps and things like that that you can use. I've never used an app to communicate with parents, um, but you can do that as well to let them know of upcoming things if you don't want to send a newsletter. The number six um, way to keep parents involved, and I'm looking at my post note here to make sure I get them all, that's why I'm looking away, <laughs> are to get the kids involved. So sometimes with self-contained, even well, I guess with any child, so I'm just going to give you an example. So have you guys ever played like at bus duty, um, which is all our favorite thing at bus duty, like on a Friday, the kids are super rowdy and you're just like, Oh my goodness, I can't wait to get home. Let's play the quiet game. And they're just like, ha, yeah, right. So then you play this game. All of the kids have to be quiet, right? And you whisper. So say you say, my dog is green. So you whisper it in the first kid's ear and then they have to whisper it into the second kid's ear and down, so on down the line. And then the teacher walks all the way to the last kid and you wait for it to come down and they have to see how close to like my dog is green they get, but they're like the chicken crossed the road. <laughs> it's like nothing like what you said in the first place. Sometimes that's what happens when we tell a child to like, um, 
make sure to tell your parent to look in your communication booklet and they're going to go home and they're going to either completely forget or they're going to kind of, this is really, but they're going to butcher it and it's going to come out kind of like that whisper game, right? So you really want to teach your students and you can team up with parents to have them work on this. You could certainly write a note in here, don't tell the kid, and then um, email the parent or something, or if you're like super close to the parents and they have your phone number, however you wanna do it, email them. Um, be like, okay, so I put a note in your child's communication buyer, but I want you to ask the child what I told them to tell you first. And this might take a little bit, especially for our little babies and self-contained, to kind of get used to, um, but you can have the students be aware of that and have them help communicate from school to home. The other great thing about that is you can also do like exit tickets and kind of have the students at the end of the day be like, well, what did you learn today? Or even at the end of the week, what did you learn today? And they can write or use PECs to show or use their communication board to show what they did at school today and then send that exit ticket home and the parent knows to look for it and they can ask their child, what did you learn this week? And then the parent and the child can have a communication and talk about um, what they did at school today or what they did at home. Um, well, not at home, what they did um, during the week. So that's great too, you can use exit tickets in that way. And it can be something as simple as just writing it on the board and having a child, you know, write, or you can write for them. Um, today in school I did, and then cut and paste pictures for that. So the last thing, um, that was number six. The number seven is a class website. So I know that some districts do require teachers to have a district website which is something that I mentioned before. Not all do though, I've worked in, I don't even know how many different schools I've worked in now because I've worked in four different states. So um, I think only like one or two of the states that I've worked in and the schools that I've worked in have um, required the teachers to have websites through the district, which I mean, is cool. Hey, whatever you wanna do. Um, but they're also actually a really, really great thing for teachers because again, you can share your peak of the week. If you wanna put your newsletter up there, if you wanna share your calendar and instead of sending one of these things home or um, you know, having to do this every day if you're not using an app or something, you can kind of share that information on your website and your parents know where it is all the time. Um, it could be something as easily as you can buy a domain for like $7 and be missed a Lussie's class and they know to log in and here's my schedule, here's all of this or you can create a bit.ly to your district website and it could just be like bit.ly um, slash Miss Delossi's class and they can go and check out all of that stuff there. So that's a great option. Even if your district doesn't offer um, or provide you to have the district website, you can always use like Weebly is free. Um, I know a lot of teachers have used Weebly and Blogger is also free. You can set up something through Blogger really easy. Those are really the only two besides WordPress, but WordPress I think is a little much for just communicating with parents. So let me go back over the six, actually I gave you seven tips. And then um, after, if you have any questions, I'll go back through and answer any questions after this. Um, so number one is build rapport. And if you're inclined, you can hand out the student's um, parent IEP binder to kind of help the parents stay in contact with, with every one of the service providers in the school and out of school and passive service providers. Um, to kind of keep them organized throughout their whole child's educational career. Number two is to have calendars, whether your district is sending home calendars or your school is sending home calendars. You send home these calendars every quarter. You can do it that way as well. Um, number three, make the phone calls. Remember, make the phone calls positive more often than not. And um, if you can, try to call weekly. I know that for some of you who have caseloads of like 30 or 60, some of you have a lot of kids in your caseload. That takes a lot of time. Um, so definitely making at least one parent phone call at the beginning of the year that's a positive one is a great thing because that kind of helps when you have to call for the not so good parent phone calls. Um, there's also this freebie for you to help keep track of all of your parent phone calls and emails and inter, in, what word am I thinking of? I don't even know. Um, interactions, there we go. Um, so all of your interactions you can keep in that freebie. Number five, number four, I can't even count now. Number four, communication notebook. So this is the one that I use. I send it home daily. I can write notes to parents. Parents can write me notes back, put posty notes in here. They can send anything they want in this booklet. Kind of helps keep communication open between myself and the parent and lets the parent know how they did. Um, number five is a newsletter. Again, there's a freebie. It's either in my TBT shop or it's on my blog. I will share the link to it after this um, for a newsletter, but you can do that in any format that you want. 
Number six is get the, the kids involved because we don't want to play that whisper game and tell the kids one thing and they go home and the parents hear another thing. So get your kids involved and have them be active in communication. Exit tickets are great for this. And number seven is to have a class website, whether it's district hosted or it's something that you're going to do on your own. Um, it's a great way to keep communication open with your parents. So I will go back through after this video and I will answer all of your questions. I will put links to everything that I've showed you because there was a lot of free stuff and some really great stuff that will help you also keep communication open um, and keep your parents in the know. So if you have any other questions, um, please let me know. Leave a comment, send me a message, send me an email, mrsdscorner.outlook.com, and I'd be happy to chat with you. So have a good night, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.